making bread, yeast risen bread. Here's your flour. This is uh, bread flour or high gluten flour. Water, which is temperature controlled. It needs to be between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit for the active dry yeast here to become active. Salt and some flour to dust your work surface with. So, active dry yeast goes into the warm water. It's very important that the water is temperature controlled. If the temperature of the water gets above 110 degrees Fahrenheit, you run the risk of killing the yeast. Simply dissolve that in the water and then you'll let it bloom for about 10 minutes making sure the yeast is active before you mix it with the rest of the ingredients. So about 10 minutes later you can see this yeast is definitely active. It's created a, a large amount of foam on top of the water. Salt goes in with the flour never in with the, the yeast and water. Salt inhibits yeast, kills it. So the water and the yeast go in with the flour and the salt. Now it doesn't look like there's enough water in there for how much flour, but if your recipe or bread formula is correct and you've scaled all your ingredients correctly, the flour should be able to drink up that amount of water just fine. So what we're doing here is we're just kind of mixing it into a coarse ball of dough. The more you squeeze this, the more water takes the more flour from the bowl is going to become part of the coarse ball of dough. So you'll dust your work surface with a little bit of flour. That's probably a little bit more than necessary. So kneading, you'll fold it over onto itself and press that seam together. And then you'll turn it 90 degrees and then up towards you, turn the fold towards you. And then fold it over on itself. Turn it 90 degrees, up towards you, fold it on itself. Press the seam each time. And you'll continue this action until your coarse ball of dough becomes a smooth ball of dough. It doesn't need to be completely smooth at this point. There's still a few more stages left before the, the loaf goes in the oven. What's happening here is the glutens are being stretched, folded. If you can imagine a rubber band being stretched, folded, and then stretched, and then folded on itself many times. Essentially the same thing is happening to the strands of gluten or proteins in the flour. There's much more science involved in bread making than could fit in one instructional video. So this is just about where I'd want to knead it to. You're going to want to protect it from the air. You can either spray it with some oil, rub it with some olive oil, then cover it with plastic wrap. I usually just cover it with a mixing bowl, just like that. Let it ferment for about an hour, hour and a half. This one's been sitting here for about an hour and ten minutes. You can see all the gas is built up. Degas it or punch down. 
basically knocking out all the carbon dioxide that's been produced by the yeast. And then you'll re-knead it again. This time it should get even smoother than the first time. And you'll want to finish with kind of a pre-shape for whatever your finished loaf shape is going to be. Since this is going to be a baguette, I'll start it as like a, a little oval, like a football shape. Traditionally in France it's called a batard. And that kind of gives it a little head start into becoming the, the shape that it's going to be. Now you'll let the glutens relax for about 10-15 minutes. Glutens have relaxed. You can see it's risen a little bit again. If I were to try to roll this out without letting the glutens relax, the, it's just going to want to stretch back to its batard shape. So now that they're relaxed, I should be able to just roll across it in an even motion, maintaining the same diameter as I go, slowly bringing my hands to the outsides of it, and then tapering it off at the ends. Do that until you have the length desired. So this pan, specially designed for baking baguettes or French bread, it's got a curved surface, lets the bread retain its round shape as it proofs and bakes. So just situate that right in the pan like this. This is a lame. It's a special knife with a sort of curved razor blade on it. It's designed for making the scores that you see in the tops of loaves of bread. And you should be able to just drag it swiftly in a straight line across it. The curve of the blade lets it cut around the round shape of the top of the loaf. This will allow some of the steam to escape during baking. It'll also give it a nice, attractive appearance. The next step would be to proof your loaf. We have a proofing cabinet here. Off and on switch. Current temperature inside the cabinet. The red dial controls the temperature. This switch will switch its function from proofing bread or holding food for, say, a catering. You can put trays of food in here and keep them hot for service. If it's on proof, this moisture reservoir, there's an element under it causing water to evaporate up into the cabinet. You'll want to proof bread in a hot, humid environment, so ideally the temperature of the proof box would be around 90, 90 to 100 degrees, a good amount of humidity. So this is a steam injected oven, it's very similar to a convection oven. It's your thermostat set here, timer. This particular model has a roast and hold function, which will roast or bake something, and then when it gets the timer finishes, it'll hold it at a certain temperature. The steam button, very important for bread and lights. So the bread's been proofing for about 35 minutes, and it's definitely almost doubled in size from when we put it in there. You can see the scoring done with the lame very clearly. Let's put that into the oven and steam it for 20-25 seconds. The steam 
reacts on the surface of the bread, and as the dextrins are evaporated, it gives it a nice brown crust. Here's the finished loaf here. It's still hot, so we're not going to cut into it. But you can see it has a, a nice crust. Sounds hollow. Fairly attractive scoring. That's it. Loaf of bread.